everybody dylan here with west river whiskey tonight we're going to be talking about the secondary market on uh well specifically on bourbon and why it exists the th there's there's a lot of controversy controversy in the uh in the whiskey world the whiskey community about how much is too much for a bottle of whiskey um how much is um how much of that is price gouging by collectors how much is price gouging by the liquor stores that we like to shop at and i thought i'd touch base with just a just a couple things so in front of me here i've got a number of whiskeys now a lot of these uh bourbons are extremely sought after whiskeys um ones that if you're a member of any uh bourbon groups or whiskey groups on facebook or uh, YouTube or anything like that, you'll know that people always post pictures of, they're always talking about, uh, you know, where they scored it, how they scored it, how much they paid for it and everything along that, everything along those lines. The, the, the whiskeys that, that, that are here, um, not a single one of these retails above a hundred dollars. Um, probably the, the, the one that's the closest is the George T stag. Um, typically, uh, if you look at list pricing, you're going to see, you know, the MSRP on this is, is right around $85, um, between 85 and $90. Um, most liquor stores that, uh, that charge MSRP, that's, that's about the price they're going to put it at. Um, I guess I should state, first of all, that of all of these uh, whiskeys here in front of me, of all these bourbons, uh, I did not pay secondary pricing for these. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough in almost all of these circumstances to be in the right place at the right time to be able to get this at, at, at or very close to retail pricing. Um, and in a couple cases, a little bit below retail pricing. Um, so, you know, what we've got here, the... The, probably one of the one of the ones that you see a lot of is the Henry McKenna, ten year bottled in bond. Now, you can tell I've definitely had a little bit of this. Um, the uh, the bottled in bond Henry McKenna a couple years ago was named best whiskey in the world, and you know there's there's a good reason for it. It has uh, a really good flavor. It has um, for as long as it's in a whiskey barrel, it is here's the word that everybody hates. It's smooth, right? Um, I guess when I'm saying smooth, I'm not referring to the, just how harsh it is or anything like that. It's, it's a, it's a drink that you can, can really enjoy sipping, whether it's straight, whether it's on the rocks, whether it's, um, with a little bit of, uh, you know, room temperature water, um, what have you. Um, it's, it's a really good whiskey. Um, I couldn't tell you what it tastes like in a mixed drink cause I've never put, um, any of the bottles on this table in a mixed drink. Uh, but it is, it's an absolutely fantastic whiskey. Now retail on this, typically you're gonna see a retail price, um, MSRP um, of between uh, $29.99 and $34.99. Uh, that is what uh, Henry McKenna uh, believes that this whiskey should be priced at. Now, when you're looking at secondary market pricing and even in some liquor stores that you go into, uh, you're going to see prices of this $50, $55, $60. Um, I like to say that this is a really good whiskey for $40. Um, it is an absolutely fantastic $40 whiskey. Um, the, the, the problem with uh, when people are talking about uh, different whiskeys and how they're so sought after and everything like that is it doesn't matter what a whiskey tastes like. It really doesn't matter what the cost of a whiskey is, the, the, or what the MSRP is, what drives the cost of whiskey is how sought after it is compared to how rare it is. Right. So when you're looking at some of these, some of these bourbons, uh, like Henry McKenna, like George T. Stagg, like Stagg Jr., they only have uh, a limited number of bottlings a year. They only put out a certain number of bottles. If you're in a state that does allocation, um, you, you, Sometimes you have to win the lottery to even be able to purchase it in the state that you live in. And that contributes to how these prices get completely 
uh, blown up uh, and and overinflated. Um, there are uh, I've seen a number of bottles of of George T. Stag here in South Dakota, um, here in Rapid City, as a matter of fact, which is where I got mine. Um, and like I said, I paid uh, I paid uh, uh, right around retail for it. The you see a lot of places that have this right now that are listing it for two fifty, three hundred, three hundred and fifty dollars. That's three and a half, four times uh, what it should sell for. And it, in my opinion, that is that's yeah, it, it makes you choke up a little bit inside. But what are the reasons for that? Why are why why, why do we get mad about how how liquor stores are pricing their product um, when what we really should be a little angry about is the collector's market, the secondary market. You know, I had the, the fortune of talking with one of our local liquor store owners a while back, and he uh, he made a comment to me, and I couldn't agree uh, more. It's, if he sells you this bottle at retail price, let's say he sells it to you at $84.99, $85, and he knows that you can turn around and sell it for $350, $400. Why should, why should he have to keep that price low so that somebody else is going to, to buy it, not even to drink it, but buy it to sell it, um, flip it on a secondary market? So when, when you're looking at why liquor stores are charging what they're charging when it's above MSRP, really what you have to look at is the secondary market. And whether that's collectibles, whether that's buy, sell trade groups uh, in Facebook or Craigslist or any number of places that you can get it, all the way down to some of the some of the online um, some of the online uh, liquor sellers uh, that uh, that are that are charging way over inflated prices, and they know that people are willing to pay it because it's rare, because it's sought after. Um, because it was a limited run or because it, uh, it just like the Henry McKenna won whiskey of the year at twenty nine ninety nine, whiskey won whiskey of the year and people went crazy for it and the prices just went through the roof. So really, I think when we're, when we're looking at it, when we go into these, into our favorite liquor stores, um, um, locally here in the Black Hills, and the surrounding areas, we we really need to make sure that we're we're taking into account that a lot of people that are buying this, they're buying it to collect it. They're not buying it to drink. And I guess you know that's that's up to whoever wants to do it. That's their it's their money. They can do what they want with it. Uh, but it does seem to uh, to take a lot of these a lot of these bourbons out of our reach. Right? It takes it. Um, takes it away from uh, from our ability to enjoy it as whiskey drinkers. You know, one of the one of the whiskeys, uh, another bottled and bond that uh, that I was really happy with is the the E. H. Taylor, right, the small batch. Uh, and this is this is open, by the way. It's not. I'm not uh, sitting here saying one thing and doing another. This is opened. I have uh, I have sampled this. Um, but again, this is a this is a, a forty dollar bourbon that uh, that you're going to be lucky if you can find it for seventy eighty dollars anywhere you go, and uh, right here in town you can you can find it that way. But if you look at what this stuff is going for on the secondary market or what um, people are willing to pay for it, you know, finding it for seventy eighty dollars while it's frustrating. It's still lower than what you're going to find in a lot of the secondary markets. And I, and I, again, I just want to point out here, in no way, shape, or form are we sponsored by anybody, okay? There, there, is, there is no sponsorship dollars in this whatsoever. Um, this is, this is a, a passion of mine. I absolutely love doing this. I love uh, researching bourbons, whiskeys, scotches, um, you know, and, and everything in between. And so when I'm saying that, that you know you're still going to be able to find this stuff at a lower prices in liquor stores than you are on the secondary market while that's still kind of frustrating to a lot of us it uh it really puts puts it in a different perspective where we can sit here and say yeah they might have it at this price at xyz store uh here in town but you know if you look online people are trying to hawk this bottle of george t stag for 500 dollars um 
and not just because it's any bottle of George T. Stag, but because it's a uh, 58.45% uh, alcohol, 116.9 proof, um, you know, limited, uh, limited, whatever, blah, 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 what have you. It, it there's, there's no reason uh, for the prices to go that high, but whiskey in general, uh, especially uh, American bourbons suffer from, from this uh, extreme markup in pricing. And it's kind of like people view it as a commodity, right? They're, they're speculating on this. Like uh, when baseball cards went through the roof in the, in the late eighties through nineties, uh, you know, where a lot of uh, collectible card games are today, where, um, gold and silver pricing and all that stuff, people are speculating on this. They're buying this, they're holding it, uh, as an investment so that they can turn around, flip it and make money on it. And however long it is, uh, however long it is that they're going to hold it. So, you know, when we're, when we're looking at, at buying, buying whiskeys, if you don't want to see prices go through the roof um, in our local area, which, you know, there, there are a couple places that have some really nice bottles here in town. They have some very nice bottles and I'd like nothing more than to, uh, than to be able to sample some of those. But again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pay $500 for a bottle of 12 year old pappies. I'm not going to pay $2,000 for a 15 year old bottle um, of, uh, of, of, you know, anything to be completely candid, you know, when, when we went to whiskey fest this year, they had a number of, of spectacular whiskeys available for everybody to, to sample. And while I thought stuff like the OFC and the William LaRue Weller and the Pappies and the Sherry and the rare cask uh, for McAllen and a number of others were absolutely extraordinary drinks. Um, there is no way I'm going to pay $2,400 for a bottle of OFC. You know, two thousand fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for a bottle of uh, William Leroux Weller. It's just not going to happen. So what what uh, what ends up happening with those bottles is they become a uh, mainstay on on the shelves because it's basically out of the the price range or out of the realistic expectations that someone's willing to put money down on it, um, especially in a community like ours. And that's not to say that there aren't people that will, um, but you know, when you can go into into a couple of the local stores here and see uh, and see some of those uh, high end bottles that have been on the shelves and are still on the shelves. And you're thinking, oh, man, if that's there in a couple months, I might pull the trigger. If that's there in X amount of time, I might pull the trigger. And it's been there. It's still there. You know, they're still on the shelves. They haven't sold. Um, but they're they're holding on to see if uh, if someone will pick it up. So, you know, I guess the. Uh, the moral of the story is if you're fortunate enough to find um, a store that is selling these items at retail or right around retail, if you want to pick them up, pick them up. I just hope that when you do that, really, you're picking them up to drink them. You're not uh, you're not picking them up to hold and, and try to flip at a at an astronomical markup later on. Um, like I said, though, earlier with 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 everybody, it's their choice. It's it's their whiskey. It's their money. They can they can spend their money and do what they want with their whiskey. Um, but all it does is really drive up the cost for everyone else. When everyone buys into the hype of, you know, wine connoisseur or, or Murray's uh, whiskey Bible every year and they buy into that hype and they go out and they start hoarding this product and making it harder um, for liquor distributors in states or for, you know, allocated states or, uh, states that have, um, state owned, uh, ABC stores and stuff like that. It just makes it harder for them to get. Um, it makes it harder for them to get. And it takes something that like bourbon that was created by farmers basically in this country. And it, it, takes it out of the hands of the the people that drink it to enjoy it um who after a hard day of work especially you know stressful times like this they either get home or they're they're done working for the day and and they want to have something something good to drink and it really kind of limits their options um because it's 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 a luxury that uh, gets priced uh out of uh out of the ability of people to buy it so 
you know, if, uh, if you do find yourself fortunate enough to pick it up and if you do find yourself fortunate enough to be able to, to find some of this stuff at retail, like your H Taylor, um, like your George T stag, stag junior McKenna, uh, even stuff like angels envy, uh, and Sazerac and all kinds of things like that, that you see marked up very heavily for bottles of whiskey that should be between 30 and $60 right there. Uh, it's, it, pick it up. You know, if you can find it at retail, pick it up, try it. Um, you know, you're, you're, you know, there, there's really only a couple uh, whiskeys that I've picked up that, uh, that I paid uh, a little bit more than I would have normally liked to pay that I've been disappointed with. And that's not anything in front of me here. I mean, these were all worth it. Um, you know, I look at stuff like my stag and my tailor and the tailor I've had for about six months now, and I've had two drinks out of this and both of them have probably been around one ounce shots. The stag, um, I've had just a couple drinks out of the stag, but when I had, uh, when I had a group of, uh, of the, uh, West river whiskey, um, fan group over, uh, before all this uh, craziness happened, um, this was one of them that, uh, you know, that we sampled. Same with the, the Stag Junior. Now, this is one I, I really enjoy. I really like the Stag Junior. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I like to say, it's kind of like hand sanitizer for your insides. Because, uh, you know, it's you're looking at just about 62, I think it's about 62%, 64.2%, excuse me. Um, and a couple others like that. You know, I've, I've got uh, my dry fly, uh, um American uh, wheat whiskey that that I think is absolutely fantastic. That's over sixty percent too. But um, but the majority of these they're just good to drink. They're good daily drinkers. You know, pick them up and try them. Don't pick them up and and store them. You know, that's that's basically uh, my uh, my thoughts on that. So um, yeah, I think uh, I think that about covers what I wanted to talk about tonight. And you know, if uh, if you like the video. You know, give us a like, uh, you know, visit the page. If you if you like the page, you go over to our group on uh, Facebook, West River Whiskey. It's right at the top of our uh, Facebook page. You can just click on it and it'll take you right there. Feel free to join that group. Join in the conversation. We've got some uh, uh, interesting stuff going on over there. We're doing uh, pretty much all of our tastings are going to be on that group uh, going forward. Really meant for for members. We're going to be doing some uh, really cool uh digital tastings coming up with, uh, with like via zoom, uh, stuff like that to try to really get, uh, people involved, uh, while we're having to stay, you know, a respectful distance apart from one another. We really want to make sure that we're, we're still able to have fun and, and talk with each other and, and drink together, even if it is miles apart. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching again. Uh, this is Dylan with West river whiskey. You guys have a great night. Thanks a lot.